Hi there feminists and welcome to the very first episode of this podcast. In this series we take you to the rise and development of feminism. This is based on the Netherlands but we also include interesting events abroad. We are Bente, Mirjam and Samira and we will take you through the four waves of feminism where we also look at feminism nowadays and our own experiences. Great, so let's start this podcast with explaining a little bit about feminism. Feminism is a movement that aims to achieve um, equal rights and opportunities for all genders. In the beginning, these movements mostly included women. When it became a bigger movement, more men joined in and supported these women. Before we continue, we would like to introduce ourselves. So my name is Samira, I'm 18 years old and I'm in, second, in my second year of the study creative business. My name is Bente, I'm 20 years old and I'm also in the second year of the study creative business. My name is Miriam, I'm 22 years old and I'm also in my second year of creative business. And today I will take you through the first wave of feminism. In the Netherlands there was one specific movement that did a lot for equal rights between men and women. This movement is called the VVVK. In Dutch it means the Vereniging voor Vrouwen Kiesrecht, but it translated in English as Women's Suffrage Association. This movement was set up in 1894 by Wilhelmina Drucker. There might be a few people who wonder who this woman is. So Wilhelmina Drucker was born in 1847. She was active in a social democratic bond. Here she noticed that women had basically no right to have any input in politics. She wanted to change that and started a group called the VVV, means Free Women Association, in 1889. Later they started a new group called the VVVK. There is another woman who is very important in the rise of feminism in this time. Her name is Aletta Jacobs. Aletta was not only the first woman who went to university, she is also the first female doctor in the Netherlands. When she found out that Drucker started the VVVK, Aletta immediately joins in. Two years later, she even became the president of the VVVK in Amsterdam. Um, I have two pictures, of one of Wilhelmina Drucker and one of Aletta Jacobs. Um, let's start with the one of Aletta Jacobs. Um, this is her. She has, um, it's like an older picture, which makes sense. She doesn't look very happy. No, she um, doesn't. She quite serious, actually, yeah. yeah. Um, she has short brownish hair, I believe. Like a dark hair. Can't really see the color because it's a black and white picture. Um, yeah, and she has like this beautiful, I th think it's a dress or a blouse. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a a portrait i think yeah, yeah. Um, so she doesn't look quite as happy but no she, she doesn't she is very pretty though and then we have Wilhelmina drucker um i think she's a bit older than aletta jacobs she looks a bit happier she yeah. just looks a bit happier in it uh, indeed um her hair is uh i think it's like a little bit longer um but she has it tied Grayish. up in the back and like yeah blonde grayish i think I was wondering, did you know any of these women before we started this podcast and we did our research? Mm, I personally only knew about Aleda Jacobs. Um, you know, we had that in history, but it was like a little bit of about Aleda Jacobs. I only remember that she was like the first female doctor in the Netherlands. Um, but before researching this podcast, I didn't know that she did much more than being the first female uh, doctor in the Netherlands. I kind of knew about Wilhelmina Drucker. We, I, re I remember we had history lessons and the first chapter was the history of politics in the Netherlands, which is not something I'm very interested in, especially from that time. I thought it was a very, very boring subject. So I kind of skipped it. And I do remember we had talked about Wilhelmina Drucker and Aletta Jacobs a little bit, but as I said, I was not really interested in it. So I was very happy to go to the next chapter. So a, li a little bit. Yeah, I don't remember going through this at all, but maybe that's because I, it was like in the, um, I think in my fifth year or of high school. So I just kind of give up learning and didn't really pay attention to anything. So I think that's the problem. I don't really have heard of these two women. Um, so, yeah, because I do believe we gone through that those chapters. Yeah. I just didn't really pay attention. <laughs> That's sad. We, which is my bad, to be yeah. honest, because it's a wonderful sub uh, wonderful topic. And I really should have paid more attention. Yeah. It's wonderful, but I just, yeah, I didn't. 
Shall we continue? Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Before the Fifi case started, there were a few things that happened that were very extraordinary. Before Aletta Jacobs joined the Fifi case, she wanted to put herself up for election in 1883. She got denied because apparently she didn't follow the rules of the law. Based on this attempt, the law got changed in 1887. The new law now stated that only men and male were allowed to vote or put themselves up for election. Before it, it stated as Dutch residents. As said before, in 1894, the VVVK was founded. We said that in 1896, Aletta Jacobs became the president of the VVVK in Amsterdam. In 1903, Aletta was promoted to the position of president of the national board of the VVVK. A few years have gone by when in 1911 to 1912, Aletta Jacobs went on a propaganda tour with the British feminist Gary Chapman Cat. They visited different continents, including Russia, Asia and Africa. The purpose of this tour was to raise awareness about feminism and to observe the conditions of women in these countries. This podcast is based on several sources that state the same. Between 1912 and 1916, we could find very little information about what the VVVK was doing in that time. The reason for this is uncertain, but it could be related to the outbreak of World War I in 1914. When we researched important women in World War I, the names Aletta Jacobs and Matahari mostly came up. Penta, could you tell us something about Matahari? Yes, of course. Margareta Geertruide Selle, or better known as Matahari, uh, was born in 1876 in Leeuwarden. She traveled to Paris after a failed marriage. Here she worked as a professional dancer. She became very famous and traveled to Europe with her dancing. When World War I started, she actually got sent back to the Netherlands from Berlin. The German wanted to use Matahari as a spy. She has experience with traveling, knows multiple languages and has many contacts. They wanted her to spy in France, which she does. The French and British soon found out that she might be a spy for the German. Eventually, the French arrested her and she was charged with espionage in February 1917. She was executed by a firing squad in October 1917. And I also have a picture of Matahari. Well, she doesn't look very typically Dutch. Does no, she, she doesn't. No, she, she really doesn't, no. A lot of people also thought she had like uh, ancestors from um, Indonesia or Malaysia or even Jewish. Um, but that's not true because both her parents are Dutch. Yeah, she's it's not very typical Dutch if no. you see her. She has like brown hair and this, um, yeah. Dark features. Also, the way she dresses is more like Asian culture. Yeah, it's really yeah. her her outfit on this picture is really Eastern, but I don't really know how to describe it. I think it's mostly uh, jewelry with like yeah, mm-hmm. um, very a, yeah nude as well. There's yeah. not a lot of Clothes. fiber. <laughs> yeah, no, I think because it's she was a dancer. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah, I think it's uh, it has something to do with like the fact that she's a d- uh, she was a dancer. She has like this um, sort of big crown on her head. Yeah, if you compare it to Wilhelmin Zucker and Aletta Jacobs, we've seen before, then you could see a l- big difference in yeah. clothing yeah. because yeah. those women were wearing dresses or blouses. We we're not sure, but it was up to their their chin almost. Really, yeah. really covered. Yeah, yeah they fully covered. covered. Really, yeah. Fully covered, and she barely covers things. There are a lot of like, yeah. Jewelry like beads, yeah, and pearls um, maybe. Yeah, pearls, beads, those kind of stuff. She has like this these bracelets, one on, on her uh, wrist and one on her like close to her shoulder, on both arms, and then a big necklace. And um, yeah, her top she's wearing is just kind of like a bikini top, but made out of jewelry basically. Yeah, and she has. Um, Skirt, like I don't really know. Maybe like a belly dance. I just wanted to say it reminds me a bit of a belly dancer. (laughs) So Smira, can you tell us more about Aleta Jacobs in World War One? I sure can. Um, Aleta Jacobs got a job to travel to war zones in Europe. Here she gave a call to action to negotiate peace. Um, At one of her speeches, she stated, and I quote. Um, I strongly feel that we must now raise our voices so that the new era of civilization that will rise from the ashes will have a stronger foundation, um, a foundation on which women 
with their instinctive, constructive and pacifist qualities have the opportunity to assist men in exercising world politics. But since Alice Jack was first Dutch, this, the original quote is in Dutch. So Miriam, you um, said um, there wasn't a lot of information to be found about the VVVK in between 1912 to 1916. Um, what would you think was the reason for that? Well, I found something of World War One, and I can imagine that if there's a war in your country or at least in Europe, and I mean, as you said before, that the Netherlands was neutral. Yeah. Um, but I, I think if there's a war going on, then your priorities are somewhere else. Then. Yeah, I think you're always worrying. Like, let's hope it's not. Yeah. Getting here. Yeah. The war. Yeah. Shall we continue? Yes, we shall. The VVVK was not done yet. In 1916, they arranged a massive demonstration in Amsterdam. There were more than 18,000 men and women demonstrating for women's suffrage. One element of this demonstration was a parade. And it was not just a simple parade. It was a very well thought through parade. They had a whole system and idea behind the order of this. I think it's a nice part to go through it. So here it comes. On the first row were policemen on horseback. Second row was a band. Third came three women and one man on horseback. One of the women was dressed as a Dutch virgin, a woman who symbolizes the state. And they all held up a shield with the text women's suffrage. Next came the women in colors of the association, so yellow and white. They represented countries that had fully or partially implemented women's suffrage. Fifth came women in green, and this color represented the hope of universal suffrage. Next came women in local costumes, and they came from different departments from the VVVK. Next came the other remaining parties, and the parade was closed by cars, which included people who were not able to walk that well. Very inclusive. In some ways, the parade and demonstration was successful, but they did not achieve what they had in mind. Because of the demonstration, the VVVK had a massive increase of memberships. One of the bigger achievements after this was the change of the law in 1917. Since then, all men were allowed to vote in the Netherlands. Before this, it was only allowed for the higher ranked men. Women were still not allowed to vote, but that didn't mean that nothing changed for them. Women were given a passive suffrage, and this means that they were not allowed to vote, but they were allowed to stand up for election. Do you think they were happy with what they achieved after the demonstration? I think they were happy because they achieved something, but I feel like it's a bit useless because they could be elected, but they couldn't vote. Yeah. And I don't think men would vote on women in no. that time period. No, it's like so why? Yeah, it was like, um, yeah, I think you're, you're allowed to be elected, but there's no woman who can vote for you. No. So yeah, it feels a bit pointless, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Like, but here you have something. I think they were happy about the change, but they were not pleased with the with how far they have come yeah. so far so i think they, they they still want more yeah which well they obviously want more because yeah. that's the whole point but um yeah i think yeah i think it was a start yeah it was a start and it the women didn't have to wait for a very long time after it because in 1919 the law was changed again the new law said that everyone in the netherlands has now the right to vote this means men and women also said the Netherlands has universal suffrage. It's very impressive what they, um, what these women did. Do you both think you could do it? No. <laughs> no, I don't think so either. I don't think I so. I, could, I don't think I could do it as well, but maybe back then, uh, back then, at especially because <laughs> the time was very different. Yeah. And because now we have like social media and it's just much easier to influence other people and it's way more normal to be not normal and um, back then it was very different so if you were like different from the rest you you didn't stick to the norm um people thought you were weird and they looked at you weird and it was just a no-go so to be brave enough to actually like do something like this i think that's a very big deal and the fact that we all three of us say we wouldn't we, like we we couldn't have done what what they what these women did um i think that would mean that means that we have to be even more grateful for it 
Yeah. Because, well, that kind of shows for how much of a big deal it was. So if we compare like the past with today, we still see some similarities. Uh, I mean, we still have universal suffrage. Uh, did you guys vote this year? I did. I did too. My first time, actually. Ooh. Yeah, it's yeah, first time. my first Exciting. time. So How did it feel? Yeah. <laughs> How well, was it? A struggle, to be honest, because I didn't understand the paper thing. It no, was but that's so a topic. It that's was so huge. I was thing. so confused and it was just hard. And yeah, I but that's that <laughs> that thing is bigger than the, a <laughs> map of the world. Believe <laughs> yeah, me, it's, it's like, it, it's like oh. huge. I was like, I, s I was, I was. Also and it's easy to fold it out. Open, yeah, but to get it back to. Oh no, I couldn't. Put it into I couldn't the open it. I was like, <laughs> where are the, where where, oh. are, where is everything else? I couldn't <laughs> open it fully. So I was and like, then you have to find that one person you want to fold in that massive list. Yeah, yeah. it was <laughs> it was, oh, it was hard. Yeah, yeah, it's a real struggle. You yeah, that's you the yes. biggest thing. Just you do open need a guide it for it. And to fold it back <laughs> and put it in the container, that's the biggest thing. Yeah, that's a bad but thing. I also had like the thing because you have like these tables, right? And mm -hmm. there were three tables in total. Two were like normal height. One was like people for like in a wheelchair or something. I ended up at that one and I'm tall. So <laughs> I was like, the table was like at my knees. <laughs> that's so sad. And I was like, I had to like bowed down because I couldn't reach it because I was way too tall. <laughs> and I also oh. had to struggle to like fold it open and shit. <laughs> no, it's shit. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no cussing. <laughs> I was also having like trouble with folding it open and oh, it was just terrible. Well, that was a good first experience it of folding. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> On to many more folding. Awesome. <laughs> so what did you girls think of the first episode? Do you think we've missed anything that we still want to discuss? I think we spoke about a lot of things. I think we covered most of it. Yeah. Yeah. I all don't think all the big things uh, definitely that happened in the yeah. first wave. Yeah. I wouldn't think I couldn't think of anything else we had to uh, mention. So with this, we want to end the very first episode of the series. Um, thank you so much for listening. Um, hopefully you found an interesting podcast. Benza, could you give a little teaser where we will talk about next week? Definitely. Uh, on the next episode, we will be talking about the second wave of feminism. And I will be your host on that. Uh, we talk about the rise of anti-conception, the Dolominas, and much more. Because a lot of stuff happens in the second wave. Not only in the Netherlands, but around the world. Uh, and we also discuss the effects that it still has on this day. So hopefully we will see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs> 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 Bye. Bye.